Hello and welcome to Down the Fleece Hole. My name is Barb and I'm coming from you from mid-Michigan. This is episode one. Um, I started learning how to crochet and knit back when I was in high school, uh, just over 20 years ago now. And enjoy doing that, but over the last couple of years, I had decided I wanted to learn how to spin. And so about two years ago, got my first spinning wheel and started to teach myself. I joined a guild in the area and slowly started to acquire additional wheels, spindles, uh, support spindles especially. And then also I got into uh, doing some weaving with rigid heddle loom. Um, recently I acquired an electric uh, e-spinner and I've been really loving that. Uh, it makes plying my yarn so much easier and the amount of yarn I can spin in one time is just, it's amazing. So, um, in this podcast, my thoughts are, you know, to talk about spinning, uh, things that I've been knitting. Um, I haven't been doing a lot of weaving lately, but anytime I do any weaving, I'll share that with you guys. And the other thing, uh, books. I really enjoy reading. Uh, a lot of my reading has actually lately been done on um, Audible uh, with the uh, tape, uh, books on tape, just because of the fact that I have a hour commute one way to work. And so it's a nice way to just kind of to be able to read a book um, while I'm driving. So for spinning, I've had a lot of yarn that I've produced recently. Um, I had uh, some stuff that I had started actually a while back and ended up recently just got back to finishing off the rest of it, spinning it up, and then uh, applying it. So this is a yarn here that I did. Um, this is a Paulworth uh, base. Um, I actually got this, um, it's a total of just over eight ounces, and I got it from uh, somebody in my spinning guild who was selling uh, some stuff that they had acquired from another person uh, for just a couple of dollars and that on the uh, bags, which were four ounces. So there were two bags of this and I decided to go ahead and just spin it up. Um, my mom, while I was spinning it, my mom kept seeing this and she just kept saying how much she likes the color of this. So I'm thinking that this is going to be something that I'm going to make for her. Um, I'm not completely sure yet what, um, but my thoughts are maybe along a shawl. Um, it's a lace weight yarn. And that, and it was over 1,400 yards um, that I was able to get out of this. And then another yarn that I have done is there's this blue, um, shades of blue and also some grays in it. And this here is a merino silk. Uh, again, this is just a little over eight ounces um, and about just over 1,300 yards. Uh, this uh, came from Into the World, um, the Fiber Month Club, and the colorway was called The Traveler. I started spinning this back in the very beginning of the year, uh, back in January, uh, with thoughts of uh, doing a shawl with it. And it just took a while um, to go and to get everything spun up on it. So I'm still thinking probably a shawl um, and just have to decide on a pattern. And then I have this yarn here. This is a BFL uh, silk and also a BFL. Uh, this also came from Into the World. Uh, this was their Magnetic uh, Chaos, which was, I believe, their November um, club installment. And um, one strand is BFL just, and then the other on this two-ply is a BFL silk. 
And again, this is probably, I haven't actually done the WPI on it, um, but it's probably somewhere around a uh, light fingering um, to a heavy lace. And this one I actually need to measure still to see how many yards I got. Um, but this is also just over eight ounces. And this one, I ended up spinning it up um, actually on my e-spinner. I got an eel uh, 5.2. Um, and I started it, um, just about a week ago and it took me just under a week to spin, um, both, uh, four ounces of fiber and then to ply it. And then this here is actually, I'm not sure what the base is on it. Um, it was done in a workshop that we had at our Spinners Guild in which uh, we got to play around with uh, the drum carters um, and to learn how to do blending on the drum carter for fractal uh, yarn. And the colors are not usually what I would go for. Um, it's purple, there's kind of like a neon apple, like an apple green in it. Um, <coughs> There's a darker purple, and uh, in some areas, there's just a natural white. Uh, this is really soft, though. It's very squishy. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to make out of it because it's not colors that I normally wear. Um, but we'll figure something out. And uh, this came out, it was a worsted weight, just a little over, it was about three ounces and just over 200 yards. And then this here, uh, this was another one that I did not have a tag for, um, but I am thinking more than likely, this was probably a Lincoln. Um, it was a longer staple, a uh, little bit more, uh, not real soft, although it actually, it came out pretty nice. Um, this is probably about a fingering weight, uh, was just over 200 yards, if I remember right, and four ounces. And this, I'm thinking either maybe some fingerless mitts or um, maybe a hat. I'll have to figure something out for it. So I've been doing a lot of spinning lately and like I said, I got the e-spinner. It's been about two weeks now. And it's an EEL 5.2. Um, there is a gentleman out in Massachusetts, uh, I believe he's around Boston, who has made these electric spinning wheels. And this is my, uh, this is my electric spinning wheel. And actually, I do have a spin going on right now on it. Uh, it's a merino, um, and the uh, colorway is called uh, Tiger Lily, and this is some, it's old stuff, uh, stuff my mom acquired actually years ago, and had been sitting, and when I started spinning, she allowed me to go ahead and pick out some stuff that I'd like uh, from her stash, and this was one of the ones, and I'd spun up some of it, but I still had quite a bit left, so I've been spinning this up recently. And uh, I'm thinking about doing a three ply on it um, as a chain ply. I haven't done much chain plying, um, but I did do a little testing with using the e spinner. And I found that I was able to get the uh, speed down enough that I feel like I could actually do a decent chain ply. Uh, when I've tried before, I've had like way over plied yarn. Um, and it was just very discouraging. So I left that be and decided I like the way that the colors are on this and I'd like to try to keep the colors the same and that uh, together and not have such a marled look or the barber pole, pole look. So I decided I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try doing a chain ply on this and hopefully I'll be successful. And no idea what I'm gonna make of it but it'll be something. Okay, so the other thing I have, which of course I left uh, 
over on the other side of the room. I'll go grab that in just a moment, please. I have some Icelandic fleece that I bought uh, back earlier this month or actually back earlier this year, uh, in March, I think it was. In April, I decided to start working on processing the fleece, washing it, uh, combing it, um, and spinning it up. And this is just a few of my skeins. Uh, these ones are mini skeins. I did them at about 50 grams, and I'm gonna be doing some dyeing with them. Um, but I wanted to kind of have smaller amounts so that if I didn't like the way the dye turned out the first time, I didn't dye a whole bunch one color. Uh, this actually turned out to be real soft. It was a uh, hogget fleece is what they call it, um, which is uh, it's a sheep or a ewe who is, is no longer a lamb, um, but they haven't reached maturity, if I understand right. And uh, they're usually, it's about a year old. It kind of depends. There's a range for them. Um, but the, uh, the yarn turned out, it's really nice, it's soft. Um, I'm thinking probably a sweater on this. And so far I have just over 3,000 yards um, that I have spun of uh, this Icelandic. And I still have a little bit of a single left, um, or a good amount of single left on one bobbin that I need to separate onto a, se a second bobbin so I can ply that. And then I also have uh, my carding waste or my combing waste. Um, I took and anything that was in pretty good shape that didn't have a lot of uh, nips in it or didn't have a lot of debris and that I took that off the combs and uh, carded it into bats. And so I'm gonna be spinning that up too um, and doing a woolen spin on those. Uh, so, so far I have two bats that I've made up and I still have enough of the combing waste uh, to probably make up a third or it's at least a third, a third bat, maybe a fourth bat. All right, so a lot of spinning being done um, and eventually I'll be figuring out some knitting projects for those and I do have some odd uh, things that I've been doing actually working on with knitting um, I have uh, two projects that I started earlier this year that have been on the needles for quite a while and it's about time to actually be get them off uh, the first one, I started this in February. This is a circular shawl. Um, it's called Vampire Wine, and it's by M. Mario, uh, who was a shawl designer um, who passed at the beginning of this year. Um, he had a lot of patterns that were available for free on Ravelry, um, and after his death, his family actually decided to make all his patterns that he had available for free. Um, quite a few of those um, had been test knitted um, already. Pretty much anything that was on Ravelry had been test knitted. Um, and then he had a group uh, that he had people who test knit for. Um, and he had patterns that he had done that hadn't been test knitted yet. Um, this one was on Ravelry. Um, and I found a couple of minor mistakes and that I made some notes of them um, when I've been updating my uh, project page. And the biggest uh, issue I had was actually when I started doing my edging. Um, he uses what he called a ragged, ragged edged border. And it's a very nice little lace border in that. Um, it's the lace has actually worked on both sides of this and that but what happened was uh, he had a little bit further up in the pattern where you increase and decrease um, those increases and decreases were missed and so I started on it and I got to about row six or seven I think and my stitch count wasn't working out and so I I tore it back and then I tried again and still my stitch count wasn't working out. 
And so I sat down, I really started looking at the pattern, um, and I used a pattern uh, or chart uh, software program that I have, and I went and I put the chart into my software program and came to find out that there was a few mistakes that were made. And so I was able to go ahead and uh, make some corrections for those, and I'm planning on actually putting that on my project page of what exactly I did. Um, to go and to correct it. So the yarn here, this is uh, from Knit Picks. It is their gloss lace in their color uh, Boudreaux, or Bo Boudreaux. Um, but it's kind of like a purpley red. Um, the shawl is gonna be huge, I think, once I'm done with it. You can kind of see where the border has been binded off already. And that, um, and doing this border has just been taking forever. So I need to kind of sit down and just do it. And that, um, but of course, there's a lot of other things that I get interested in doing too. So, uh, you know, a bit of quality time with this, I think would probably, you know, I could probably get this off the needle soon. I'm hoping by the end of this month. Then the other project I had started and I started it in March, I believe it was. Um, I was wanting to go and do something that was faultless knitting because I had quite a few projects going on that I really had to pay attention to count stitches, um, a lot of lace. And I got to where I decided I needed to have something that I could just sit there and I could knit and I didn't have to think about what I was really doing. So I started this cardigan um, this is by uh, Tin Can Knits. It is their Harvest Cardigan and it is available for free on Raverly. And I've gotten quite far on this. Um, I figure a couple more inches in that uh, before I start the ribbing on the bottom. And then I just need to do the sleeves. And so this is the first time I've actually knitted any kind of sweater type pattern. Uh, most of my stuff has been fingerless gloves, um, shawls, uh, nothing really that's been fitted garments. So hopefully I did some gauge swatching when I started this and I'm hoping that this will end up uh, turning out okay. I wanted it a little bit on the larger size. Um, I didn't want it real small and that. Um, so it seems to fit you know, okay, I've been able to kind of slip it on and see what it looks like. Um, and I think with, uh, once I do blocking on it, it'll be fine. Um, the yarn I'm using is from Knit Picks also. It is their wool, the Andes. Um, and it's their worsted weight and the color is chestnut. Other than that, um, I had one pattern that I actually did myself um, that I have available on Ravelry, and it is a shawl pattern. And I ended up going, I knitted this up earlier in the year. I made it out of hand spun that I did. It's a BFL silk. Um, this is also, uh, this came from the uh, yarn itself or the, uh, um, the fiber came from Into the World. Um, it was their Gilmore uh, goodies, I believe, is what it was called, a uh, colorway. And I ended up going and I went through, I wanted to do a shawl and I just couldn't find a pattern that I really liked. And so I ended up going and I looked through my stitch dictionaries and I found a pattern that I liked that was a lace pattern. And I figured out what it needed to be done uh, to make it into a shawl. It's just a simple uh, triangular shawl. Uh, it's knitted from starting at the bottom tip and just knit it up. Um, what's nice about this is that you can go and you can make it as big or small as you want. Um, it works well for when you're using hand spun yarn because you know with hand spun you might not know exactly how much yardage you're going to have. Uh, so this pattern is available 
um, on Ravelry and the normal cost for it is three dollars but uh, for celebrating the fact that I'm starting off uh, with my journey into podcasting um, or blogging as I, uh, some people refer to and uh, I'm hoping that people will watch I'm going to offer this pattern for free uh, for two weeks until the end of this month and the pattern code or the coupon code that you'll need is podcast and it's all one word um, and please share uh, this you know this podcast with other people that you know that might be interested um, you know, like you know you know if you like this you know give it a like on YouTube um, you know any comments you have you know, please feel free to share. And so then the other thing um, is I've, on Ravelry, um, I am part of a group. It's called the Ink Mork Pork um, Spin or Knitting, Knitting Guild. And it's a group where uh, people who like Terry Pratchett, um, who was a British author, uh, go and they they share their knitting projects. Um, there are some spinners on there. And they talk about uh, the Discworld novels that Terry Pratchett wrote. And we do read-alongs. Um, there's a Guild's War um, that is done. And just kind of a laid-back group. Um, but I decided with Tour de Fleece coming up, it would be neat or it would be fun to go and to have a group um, of spinners and that participate in Tour de Fleece from that particular group. And so the, uh, the group is active. Um, the Tour de Fleece group is up on the Tour de Fleece um, group page on Ravelry. And there is a link also to our um, official chat. Um, so if anybody wants to join that, please feel free. Um, and Terry Pratchett, uh, if you have never read any of his novels, if you enjoy kind of the dry humor, um, some of that British humor, uh, he's got some good stuff in that. And it's, um, it's kind of on the fantasy world side, but it's not, it's, it's a mix. It's not exactly totally fantasy um but it's you know it's different um and so talking of books uh recently uh i've been listening uh on an aud on audible uh to the game of thrones books um they had just finished up the uh, series on hbo and i had watched pretty much the series and you know, overall kind of enjoyed the overall storyline and that uh, some things that, um, you know, you sit there and you go, well, you don't really need to show all that. Um, but I decided to go and to check out the books. Um, I get a couple credits each month and I had a few that were just sitting there. So I ended up going and I, uh, I got the first book and listened through it and Pretty much followed along a lot of what the uh, HBO um, mint series was like and that although not so much of the sexual stuff um, that they showed in there and that um, you know it you know much more tamed in the books and that um, and so then finished that one and I started on the uh, second book. So we'll see how that goes um, and see how I enjoy it. But I was talking to my mom and uh, somehow books got brought up and ended up going and I, uh, I suggested uh, Terry Pratchett to her and that because um, I've listened to quite a few of his recently. And so I decided um, she she was agreeable uh, to trying it out, um, and, you know, giving him a read, and so I had to look through my books to see what ones would be a good starting point for her, 
And so I chose two different books. Um, and they're based upon some of my favorite characters of his. Uh, the first one is Guards Guards. And this is one that is about uh, pretty much Sam Vimes um, and Carrot and other office, uh, officers and people of the watch of Ankh-Mork Fork. And this one actually involves with dragons and a dragon being called and summoned and them having to fight this dragon. And uh, the Sam Vines um, character and that I enjoy, he's kind of, he's kind of sarcastic. Um, he's one of those that he just has this view of the world that, you know, it's kind of, it's relatable sometimes, you know, and so decided this would be a good one for her to start. And then the other one was uh, called Going Postal. And this one is based upon a character, it was a newer character of uh, Terry Pratchett um, that he's he did write a few books about um, before his passing uh, called Moist von Litvig. And Moist von Litvig, he is your con man and that he is looking for the easy way and eventually things catch up with him and all of a sudden he now is going from learning how you know from being that con man to becoming an honest citizen and how he uses some of those things that he did um, previously and that uh, to benefit um, all and so he's kind of, he's an interesting character, um, and it was a fun read. So if, you know, you're looking for, for a book to read, either one of these um, by Terry Pratchett would be really good, and I would highly recommend. Um, so I guess that's all for now. Uh, you know, it's kind of a starting of you know everything here and hopefully uh, you know some people show some interest um, eventually uh, hopefully I'll be able to kind of talk about maybe some of the things that I do um, some of the uh, some of my things that I use or <coughs> excuse me or some of the methods um, some like you know, maybe kind of, you know, some instructional things. Um, you know, it all kind of just depends. But please, you know, feel free to share uh, this podcast with others. Um, you know, again, uh, there is the free pattern that's available on the Diamond Pathways Shawl on Ravrilly. Um, and then the coupon code for that is podcast, all one word. And that is good till the end of this month. Um, you can find me on Raverly as Hand Knits by our Hand Knits BH. And um, okay, so in conclusion, um, I had a phone call that came through and stopped the video. But uh, I can be found on Raverly as Hand Knits uh, BH. And I have an Instagram, um, I believe it's under Hand Knits by Barb, but it's been a while. So I'll put that in the show no notes of exactly what that one is. Um, I don't really post a whole lot there, but every once in a while I do. Um, again, please share this podcast. Um, don't forget about the uh, coupon uh, for the Diamonds Pathway Shawl. Uh, that is good until the end of this month. And please feel, just share, uh, share this with others and that. And uh, hopefully I'll be back in a couple of weeks. Um, I'm thinking probably this will be a bi-weekly uh, podcast. Um, and we'll just, we'll see how much, you know, I get done. Um, you know, I don't want to sit and, you know, just talk about nothing. Um, but do want to share the progress that I've uh, made and maybe things that I, you know, what I've been learning. Um, so, again, uh, I'll see you next time, and have a wonderful day. Thank you.